do you do you view then the, the, the next like billion people that get onboarded to Bitcoin come in through primarily through earning rather than buying? Because that seems to be a distinction between Bitcoin and other crypto assets. Hundred percent. You earn Bitcoin, and, and there's basically no other asset that you're like. I mean, you you can maybe make some exceptions for NFTs and stuff like that, but by and large, if you're if you're invested or or holding another crypto asset, you've bought it, or you've like you know, bought and sold on an exchange. Whereas now it seems like you're just not going to have to interface with an exchange anymore. Yeah, exactly. So the exchanges have to, they're the crossover, right? Because you have, they have to handle the bridge between uh, the incumbent ecosystem, financial ecosystem, and then crypto, because they're, they're exchanging the dollars for the Bitcoin or, you know, whatever token it is. But with earning, you're converting your energy. Like if the human is its own battery that gets energy from the sun and food, it's like converting that energy into work, which converts it into value, which is itself a battery that you can go like reuse elsewhere to, to buy things. Um, that is, um, that's a, what, Paul had a term for this. It was like a natural coiner is what he calls. Um, Cause they earned their Bitcoin, they became a Bitcoin through like the most natural way, which is through earning. And um, okay, here's another interesting thing with his model is there is one big blocker that we haven't talked about to this group. If we're gonna bring it to the next billion people that don't have uh, bank accounts, they're sort of like financially disconnected. What else might they not have? Uh, phones. So how do you solve that one? Um, if you go on to stack, stackwork.com, I think there's a tab for like for workers and you'll see <laughs> it's this great section that says, don't have a phone, question mark, earn one. And he basically <laughs> has local dealers in these, um, in these countries like the Philippines and Argentina and, and elsewhere where they will give out these cheap Android phones that have a custom version of Android loaded. So this is, by the way, this is the way how you get around the duopoly is that you, you own the phones themselves and the OS with uh, Stack and Sphinx preloaded on the phone. And then the only way to unlock the phone is they do the jobs, which pays off the phone. And now they have a phone and service and a communication tool and uh, the ability to earn money. Um, so that's incredible. It's so cool. It's I mean, it's such just a beautiful vision of how these you get economic empowerment, you get um, connectivity, you get a lot of things out to the these people who need it the most. And I would much rather be focused on entrepreneurs and technology and people building to that end rather than people building to like sell a picture of their dog for a million dollars or, you know, whatever it is. Um, right. It's just so huh. much like more potential there.